episode 26. Hey everybody, welcome to Into the 99, where we have 99 cards, because Commander is number one. I am one of your hosts, Sherman. I'm Hope. I'm Daniel, and we have a guest with us today. Hi, I'm George. Hello, George, and today's episode... George, Jorge, whatever you want to call it. Whatever yeah. you guys are into. <laughs> so we're, today we're going to talk about uh, talk about Marin for... Da, da. Marin of Clan Nel Toth. Yeah. Well, yeah, just with Marin coming out as one of the... Secret Lairs. Secret Lair ones we just talked about. She's such an exciting card for Commander, as we said last episode. She's designed for Commander. She's not something you'd put into a deck because... It'd be horrible. That would be crazy. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do whatever you want. Very but like, popular. She skyrocketed to in terms of the the commanders that were released in this series involving the experience counters. I think she was one of the top clear choices that everybody. Oh yeah, was. Oh, yeah. yeah. everybody was. Well, and then her. for me, because I didn't play Magic in 2015, mm-hmm. um, so well, for me, with her coming back out with the antho- um, in the anthology, bringing that deck back, it gave me an opportunity to like. Do play her again. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, in the, even when, like, before the anthology, like, Marin was, like, what, $30, $40? Yeah, so, she, I think she oh, still commands be. a pretty good price, though. I she's think still she's pr- still at $12, $13, something like that. Uh, yeah. uh, probably something like that, or maybe even 20 Who knows, right? For, for everyone that doesn't know the section we're talking about, in 2015, the commander decks all had experience counters mm-hmm. yes. as their uh, ability, ability on the Planeswalker, and all of it was when X action happens... The player gets an experience counter, not the creature. Yeah, and these are counters that are off of the board. They're not interactable. They're not something you There's can power you can conduit with yeah. or anything yeah. like that. It's like, these it's are like counters just to represent how many are there, and they stick yes, into the it game. It is just like an emblem. Yeah, You yes, can't interact exactly. with them. You can't get rid of them. They don't... Thief of Blood doesn't take them. Like, nothing. I, <laughs> no, I think Sun Cleanser board. does, because it's target player removes all counters. Target player loses all counters. I think that Sun would be Cleanser an interesting would. thing to check into. Yeah, sure. yeah but be but really generally, cool. but yeah, the idea. you can't. Uh, I guess you can interact with them because you can proliferate them. Yeah, you can proliferate. True, them. but they're, but they're the, extremely difficult. The, to the remove. removal of them is pretty. That's the difficult. Point. Yeah. Yes. Once they're yeah. there, they're pretty much yeah. there. And yeah, that's kind of where the value comes. You in. remove the creature. The experience counters remain. Which yeah, is, it's not like a Voltron strategy where you get rid of my Tuvasa. Suddenly, I don't have that strong creature anymore. This is when you put. X creature back out, they were all there. And I think it was Daxos was one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Daxos was one. one. There's Mizix. Yeah, Mizix for yeah, spells, yeah, instants, and sorceries. Is Magnus, yeah. Uh, yeah. Azuri, which is a really fun then, one, the Claw of Progress, and then Marin. Yeah. And then there was also uh, a Giant, which I made the mistake of buying that one back in my early Magic career instead of Marin. I'm kicking myself now. <laughs> oh, I'm buying Marin, but Kalen. Yeah. She was yeah. a red white giant with double strikes. So yeah, I whenever figured, you cast a creature oh, man. for and, a great. At the time, I was vibing really hard on a 60 card uh, gi- Boros Giant deck. So I was like, oh, I'll just make this into an EDH deck. It'll smash people with Giants. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, you when you're that big people they don't like you we, we well, have that deck it's actually a very fun it's one, so yeah. much fun to the, play what, right yeah i still have it yeah yeah, yeah. so let's talk about marin here real quick. yeah so she, so again marin was one of the strong yeah. women characters that they decided to put out for the women's day mm-hmm. and she is actually a pretty awesome character both lore wise and physical card wise like she she is a powerhouse yeah, yeah. So she is she, strong so she's a uh, two uh black and old green uh for whenever another creature you control dies you get an experience counter and then at the beginning of your end step you can choose a target creature card in your graveyard and if the card cmc is less than the number of experience counters you have equal to or less than you can put it onto the battlefield and if it's more than that you can put it into your hand which is something that people always seem to forget yeah, yeah. that second part that you can put it into the hand. part is that it doesn't need to be something you can afford with your experience no. counters if you don't necessarily want it or you can't get it on the battlefield yet but you know you want it later in the mm-hmm. game you can still just pick or something or you else. know that you have the mana to cast it Bingo. next yep. turn Bingo. yeah so, or because, if you have flash, you're like, boom. <laughs> yeah, well, that that's exactly it. Like, and in green, like it's very possible to get flash. Yeah. So. So like, oh, there's cool. so strong. It is, yeah. It's and three, to that and... end, also, yes, yeah, she's a three four. So she's not super. Squishy. Yeah, she's not weak. Yeah, she's, she's definitely not, not the worst in terms of being a body as well yeah. at the four mana level. That's pretty reasonable, pretty, especially yeah. with other things tacked on there. Totally. Uh, now, obviously, put some boots on her. Whenever Come you on. see the words. Whenever another creature you control dies, you can get a pretty big cue as to how a lot of people play these kinds of commanders. Totally. Well, if, if you didn't play it that way, that would, I mean, you can do you, but that would yes. be crazy. This is a popular strategy in Magic we all call aristocrats. Yeah. So there's, there's so many ways of building around Marin. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone has 
their main strat like strategies that they enjoy or whatever. Like you know, we were talking about this earlier. I I would do a really really jank strategy with him. Totally. But that's besides the point. Most people when they see Marin off the bat, you're looking at sacrifice. Totally. Yes. Like Hands down. Which is exactly what I did. I went pretty straightforward, but like really really heavy bonks. So as as I am wont to do. So yeah, <laughs> everybody well, knows that at this point. Pope's a simple woman. <laughs> I'm a simple Well, you get the polarity of having low cost creatures that you can constantly yeah. keep casting and sacrificing yeah. to ramp up those counters, to, and then you have to tons bring up of big, big bonky boys, yeah, yeah. Exactly. which is awesome. Who keep so, coming back for free. Well, and wow. essentially, like it allows for a really intense reanimation deck without having to run reanimator cards. Yeah, you don't need a suite of like all the all different reanimator different, yeah. spells all at once, right? You, you can have just it, a couple in there as redundancy. Yeah. It's kind of like what I like about Moldrotha. Yes, you could run the reanimate stuff in it, but it's They're not really necessary. You slots. still, exactly, you can still just cast them from the grave. It gives you also that extra resource of the grave that we always talk about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because your grave is suddenly just an extension of your hand. You're, exactly. Uh, you're not as affected by discarding cards. Someone makes you throw something out, that's fine. You can get I, it back later on. I always discard strategically. If I have to discard, I discard something with a high CMC so I can get yeah. it back later. You yeah. don't discard something that's just got a great effect in the graveyard, like a filth, yeah. something along yeah, that some, line. Yeah, something with value. Off, right? Well, Black yeah. does also have madness things too, right? So yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So there's potential to go down that route yeah. also, which is yeah. another nice option. There's, uh, I always forget what it is, but it's one of the green cards with Madness, and it's Madness is zero. If you discard it, it's zero cost. I like that one. There's a couple of those, actually. There's a yeah. black one, too, called Call from the Netherworld. Oh, there's so a black zero. one? Yeah, you toss it. Uh, it's usually one to cast. Otherwise, when you cast it for its Madness cost for zero, you get a zero cost to return a black creature from your graveyard to your hand. Love that's it. fantastic. <laughs> I use it in my Croxa deck all the time. So that good. is a dope yeah, card. So yeah. fantastic. Oh, because yeah, because it can actually hit Croxa. Exactly, right? And you can just toss them back in your hand, resack them again. That's, yada, yada, yeah, yada. that's smart. But that's a whole other thing, right? Yeah. The nice part it. about not having to run yeah. recursion spells like, uh, you know, or I sorry, think I things like reanimate, one. dread return, animate dead is that you can now use those card slots on things to protect Marin. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because the number one problem you're going to run into is when people She's see Marin's ability, she starts doing a few sacrifices sacrifices people are going to start targeting yeah. honestly so marin sure and a, she's not hurt in a lot of games marin isn't problematic at the one or two experience counts no. people no, are saving no. their removal and she's stuff. problematic at eight <laughs> well but honestly it's once she starts hitting four in my opinion that yeah. people start to realize oh start to take notice. we should not have ignored this yeah. and yeah. now we collectively can no longer because you ignore have it. to get yes. rid of the commander now because you can't get rid of my counters yes yeah. it snowballs very fast yeah, yeah. especially yeah. Especially when you're sacrificing and recurring like little guys, you know. Yep. I would worry. Game. I would start worrying at three because three have you have a lot of creatures like Flashbang Marauder and stuff like that, oh, where yeah. like you come back and you just like constantly like mini warp uh, board wipe, const- you know yeah. everything, right? In many decks with these strategies, those, those are almost always yeah. included for me. Flashbang Marauder, and Merciless Executioner. Yeah, uh, there is a third one at the three mana level, I believe. That I, I can't remember what one, but yes, it's, yeah. That paired with the fact that like any black deck at four mana plus can be dropping grave pact makes it terrifying yep. to yeah. have those cards yeah. recurred. Yeah, exactly. A flashback marauder turns into a three drop. Everyone sacks two creatures is real strong. Yeah. And then at five you get Gary out, and then yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the 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 key thing here is, as you said, George, you know, like you don't have to worry about like the spells like reanimate, yeah. uh, soul exchange, stuff like that. Yeah, like so I think I think I only run slots. one like typical quote unquote reanimation spell, and that's victimized. But that's because it gives me yeah. the double. There's sack. also diabolic yeah. servitude right. in here. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of more that's a of little a, different. It's a more useful effect yeah. than just your straights. Kind of a re- yeah, just yeah. return a dude from the yeah. It's a it's a thing. different kind of thing because you enchant the creature, you get it until it dies, and then you get diabolic servitude back into the creature's exiled. Yeah, which is kind of fun because then you can do it again if yeah. you want to. It's not like a single use, um, like a one shot kind of reanimation. Yeah, so. Every time There's I more look, utility. With every that time card. I look at this deck list, I want to put Recurring Nightmare in it, and then I remember that Recurring Nightmare is banned <laughs> yes. for yeah. very good reason. Yes. Very good reason. <laughs> yeah. But it does never change that I want it. Now, one thing that's a really good point to mention with these sacrifice triggers, um, when you are doing this kind of a strategy where you're, where you're trying to sack things at instant speed, something you want to really keep in mind is that they don't cost mana for those abilities. Yeah. You'll notice that a lot of the cards in our deck here have just sacrifice a creature, colon, 
effect. Yeah. yeah. If you have even one mana in front of there with this kind of a deck where you're trying to do these things over and over and over again in one turn, it's that one mana can really start it to wear down so on fast. your mana cost, especially if it's colored. So you'll notice there's a lot of uh, engines here where it's just sacrifice a creature at instant speed, do something. Yeah. yeah. So, like, obviously, there's, like, common things that you always hear people talk about, like, Secure Tribe Elder, Spore Frog, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there's other things. And remember, like, you don't have to just have the creature itself say, sacrifice this creature. You can always have other creatures saying, like, sacrifice a creature, and this creature gets, like, I don't know, a plus one, plus one, or something like that. Who knows? Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter. Some of the good examples in this deck include the the Blood Baron, Jorad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zoni. Oh, I, I'm going to talk about, about him later. He's the man, right? He's great. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of my, he's one of the sleepers in this deck for sure. Well, uh, absolutely. What does he do, just in case? Because that that's not a common one. Yeah, this one's kind of a little back from the Return to Ravnica days. Yeah. But he's the man. Uh, Jared Golgarilich. Uh, Sherman, can you read it? I can't, I don't I can't, can't see, see the exact there. text. Yeah, no problem. I don't so, get it wrong. It is a black, black, green, green for a 2-2 zombie elf. That's so much fun. What Zombie a great health. tribe, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. um, so it will get a plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. Okay? Only yours. Which makes him huge. A lot of people forget that effect of him. Like, they just, they're looking at the lower effects that we're about to talk about. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he, like... He gets he, big fast. Yeah. Late, late game so dropping, big. dropping like a 20-20 four mana creature is terrifying that's yeah yeah. that's usually how it goes for me as i usually don't end up actually playing him until like very late into the game yeah yeah so his ability that most people look at is you pay one black green you sacrifice another creature each opponent loses life equal to the sacrifice creature's power all right, just which is disgusting because especially if you have like a bunch of pump spells or like let's say you sacrifice an Eldrazi because you have an Eldrazi in there for some stupid reason that's like a ten ten. What about like if you no. just have Michaeloth? Like you you play something like I'm gonna remove open, that from the deck list right now. So play some, you play something like Open the Graves. You have all these zombies out. You yeah. hit them all with Michaeloth, then you sack Michaeloth to Jared. Yeah. Uh, ew. Done. Ew. I've never done that. Well, in in, or gr- in green, there's also one. just such monster creatures, the same as black, like uh, yeah, the gray worm. O- obviously, yeah, a good card to include in in any deck that's black and wants creatures that you don't care about. It's Grave Titan, the enter the Absolutely, battlefield yes. ability yeah. to get zombies, and just even being able to sack it for six damage to each player, knowing that you can recur it and get your extra value, bringing it back. It's really strong. Yeah. yeah. Pretty nasty. And, one, and Marin does it best of all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, actually, one that I've done personally is one that a card that I just saw Daniel pull up on his screen here. But it's uh, yeah. uh, dumping, uh, sacking the Lord of Extinction. Yes. Late game with yep. you. Why do I play with you guys again? I've never done <laughs> it to you. True. That's what I guess that's why we still play. Yeah. Well, an, in- <laughs> an interesting thing about this as well is it's not inconvenienced by a lot of disruption kind of stuff yeah. True. like discard isn't gonna hurt this deck as, as much badly, yeah, yeah. That and to, the that same with mel value. yeah the, the, it's half value yeah. because you want it to die off the battlefield yeah. if you can help it but, but the, having the, it go in the graveyard is still good well the other thing too though is like mill doesn't super affect this all all they're doing it's basically allowing you to just have extra card draw yeah with and the, just pumping with the up frequency stuff. that you're gonna be hitting Yes. There, there's not many not creature cards yeah. in the deck. But yeah. here's the thing. We're not even done talking about your boy. Yeah, because he has one more ability. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. That is yeah. also another thing people forget, that he just has you bring, too you many things. You can get things. rid of him. Exactly. That's too fine. Many things. Yeah, you can get rid of him. But then his last ability is you sacrifice a swamp and a forest. Return him from the graveyard to your hand. Simple. Just yeah. sack a bio, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what makes this great with Marin... Oh, yeah. Simple. Super simple. Most other decks, what they're going to have to do... And, I mean, even if you were running Jurat as your as your commander, yeah. what you're going to do is you're going to pop a massive creature like a Lord of Extinction or something relying oh. on how many cards are in your graveyard. Do a bunch of life to somebody. But the problem with other decks is that you're going to have to pay... For a spell to get it back, yep. get it into your hand. You're gonna have to put your ad back out. You're, you're gonna have to refill everything. You're gonna have to start yeah. doing it again. Whereas Anyone? Marin. Let's say you got your Lord of Extinction in the graveyard there. You just popped him with Jurad, made somebody lose a whole bunch of life. Mm-hmm. Marin, if you have enough experience counters going, well, no worries. That thing's coming right back. You're going to pop it again. again. Yeah. Right back. You're going to you, pop it again. You literally do it like in the end step. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late game, he is just so monstrous that he is going to be an instant target. For anyone who actually yes. understands what he does, yeah. he, he is a uh, path to exile 
target for sure. Every sure. single you, time. You don't. Sure. Every oh, yeah. single time. In fairness, though, everything in this death is a path to exile target. You don't want to go into the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I exile. just saw like like you guys have a Izoni in here too. Yeah. Thousand. That was a, that was a recent ad, obviously, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, Izoni is so so strong. So like, I'm gonna talk about Izoni real fast because. It is a great add in a Marin deck, okay? It's a two black, black, green, green, okay? Elf, Shaman, Elf again, yay. Well, or two, three, it has under, uh, undergrowth. When Izoni uh, enters the battlefield, okay? So ETB, create a one, one black and green insect token for each creature card in your graveyard. And then you can play a black and a green and sacrifice another creature, gain one life, and draw a card. Right? So you're getting card advantage, you're creating you're a bunch of stuff. You're getting life, you're getting boys, you have yeah. blockers or bonkers, whatever you want. And you this have is, this fodder is... for your Megaloth. Well, the having those 1-1 one, one chumps that can block but also give you an experience counter on death yeah. makes them Token really, still hit really the graveyard, strong. yo. Well, and yeah. the other thing, too, is you can just swarm swing at them. Like People either have to take just a large amount of one chip, chip damage, damage every turn... Or they're going to have to help pump up those experience And counters. I am happy either way. Or throw you know? a triumph up the horde well, and just be nasty. This is also a key part it's not of there for a, good a sacrifice reason. strategy that you need to think about is that there needs to be things to sacrifice. Yep. So you yeah. don't always necessarily want to fill the whole deck with all effects High that value. have sac effects on them. Yeah. You need a few things that feed some ammo to that sac effect that isn't real bodies. Well, yeah, because uh, you don't want a Phyrexian Altar is a great card yeah. when there's creatures. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. That's, exactly. That's um, why, like, even on the screen right now, like, I can see, like, uh, like I said, an enchantment that I mentioned already, which is open the grave so with them, whenever a non-token creature you control dies you create a 2-2 black zombie exactly which is like you're killing your creatures anyway so then you make these zombies and then you've got a little bit of um like wiggle room almost yeah and the, those are nice things to sack you're not like those are nice things to sack for an ash nods or yeah. whatever right? yeah things so. you don't really want to lose but you want to sack for value like i uh in my yogmoth deck i do very similar combos to this one one uh, one other creature i can mention that does something very similar to you zoni Endrixar, Master Breeder. Yep. Um, whenever you play a creature spell, put X black 1-1 one, one thrills on t into play where X is the converted spell, uh, the spell's converted spells mana cost. Yeah. So you can basically just pop creatures and keep turning them into thrills. As long as you don't get too many thrills, you don't sack the guy. Similar thing with his Oni, right? You can yeah. keep popping in some insects to oh, sack. Oh, yeah. It's so awesome. I, I want to bring up one thing here. Hit me. So as we're, we're talking about these things, we're talking about like how strong all these cards are. Keep in mind... For, for all listeners out, out there, keep in mind, okay, this is one of the big problems with Marin, okay? As you're playing these cards, you become a huge target. Heck okay? yeah. So be careful when you're playing these cards. Timing okay? is key. Timing, Timing is, is everything. Because you can dump all this stuff in. Just because you can doesn't mean that it's the right moment. Yeah. Like there's a lot of times when I play Marin that I just, I I sit and I stew and I sandbag. Yeah. And I wait. Until just the right moment. Like, I'm not going to drop the Phage Emblem Vraska. Yep. Just because. Yeah. Because, like, you know, like, it's just, it, I'm going to hold. Yeah. Until I can, A, like, like, protect it with my tiny little bugs. Well, more experienced or... players as well that, like, do understand that the graveyard is a resource are not going to let Sacrifice Outlet sit on the board. No. Yeah. They're, they're, they're instantly gone. That's a Soul Ring versus, uh, yeah. like, a Phyrexian Altar or Ashnod's Altar Out. It's gone. Those, those are the targets, right? Yeah. And that's going to... Skull Clamp, uh, whatever. I'm not allowing it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A lot of those things, things that are going to let you get those experience counters, people aren't going to just let sit on the board. No. So you have to be ready to use them when they're coming out. You at least want a little value. Yeah, definitely. So, and you got to be... And because of that, you got to be careful. So sometimes, like, you got to play certain cards that kind of work with your strategy but aren't as powerful or people can look at them and like yeah okay you know like like you guys don't have desecrated tomb and i'm like okay that's kind of a good thing because desecrated tomb says like anytime a a card leaves your graveyard or I, it was it a creature only i think it's only creature cards that leave that's the, graveyard. the one that makes bats right yeah and it makes a yeah. one one bat right be perfect in this in this deck but at the same time if someone sees that they're like well Marin's all about bringing cards back from your graveyard to like yeah. either the battlefield or your hand so you're going to create a, a bat every single time. So that automatically makes you target number one. It's the same reason why there isn't a great pact. Well, yeah. on, honestly, yes. part I, part of any good EDH deck is trying to make people forget what's threatening about your deck. Yeah. yeah. And if you're sitting there, like you Everything said, that you're learning today, forget it by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but what you said though is, is really true. If you have that desecrated, uh, I think it's desecrated tomb. tomb yeah. yeah. Uh, 
if if there's bats coming out of the graveyard every time, then suddenly it's really easy to be like, you know, Marin's not the problem. It's the grave that's the problem. If there's no graveyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then somebody now, bajuka, bajuka bogs you. This is yeah. a deck that definitely people who know what they're going up against, there's going to be some sideboard cards that are really going to mess you up in this deck. Uh, yeah. Definitely your Graft Digger's Cage, your Rest in what's Peace, that? things Gra- like that. Graft Digger's Cage is a one-cost artifact that creatures can't enter from graveyards. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so, can't be targets of spells. I or believe release. so. Yeah. Wow. And then on top of that, yeah, you run effects like Rest in Peace, where as soon as something goes in the graveyard, it's exiled yeah. instead. Yeah. Leyline yeah. of the Mary Void. Get yeah. Fuel to rest in, yeah. Rest in Peace, Leyline of the Void, and Paducah Bogs are ones that I was like, yeah. These yeah. Are... Or if you want to go real cheap, go like uh, Torment's Crypt. Yeah. Or Torment's yeah. Crypt. Yeah. Zero. zero cost. You just tap it and sacrifice it, and all uh, graveyards are are exiled. There's another artifact that does that. It's there's a few. There's, There's a cranial archive that exiles all of them. There's there, the new Ashiok that exiles all of them because yeah. it's this is overly really, powerful. Yeah, there's quite a few. There's a lot of potential for that to happen. The yeah. thing is, yeah. though, I but don't that's think you I don't with creature solutions. Yes, and also I don't think a lot of people not really run graveyard. This this is I one, do, but that's because I'm. But smart. that's because yeah. But like and like I do in some decks because I use my graveyard. Mm-hmm. You know. I always so. at least sideboard it for cards that I know if they're going against a grave heavy strategy will yep. suck. Yeah. Yeah. In but, in honesty though, if somebody bajuka bogs you, easiest solution: pick up, go to a different table. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal, guys. But like even then, like bajuka bog is very specific because you have to be in black for that this yeah. is one reason why i always tell people if you're gonna throw in graveyard hate but you don't want to fill do up an a artifact slot, <laughs> no no not do even an artifact land. Scaven- yeah land scavenging yeah. ground yes okay rare from hour of devastation all right you sacrifice you it's half for a colorless but you like uh you sacrifice a desert which is itself a desert yeah and you exile all uh graveyards all okay. graveyards all graveyards great okay. card it's a great card no one plays it i have never heard of it don't run it in a single deck. I love it. I only have two copies, and I run them in my most powerful decks just I because I don't want like to use that well, slot for an artifact. Does it tap for mana? Yes, it does. One colorless. Yeah, it, it does. It still works, okay? Yeah. And then you don't have to sacrifice a spell slot. You're yes. sacrificing a land You're slot, a which land is slot, not a big which would deal. Which probably have been used for a random non-basic anyway. What's that? Or a random basic. In there that filled. Hmm? What's that card called? Scavenging Ground. Scavenging. Scavenging. It should be not. from Hour of Devastation. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just putting that on to the next Play This More one. Because I also need to play that While more. We're on the and it's not expensive. Recursion, something that I just thought of. Yeah. But we should probably mention everybody. Oh my God, is tell that me. Part of the reason that, like, so... Really, something that's amazing with Marin here is, yeah, you get all of these sacrifice triggers. You get value off of the sacrifices. But there's another piece of this that we haven't really mentioned. And that's part of the reason that you're seeing so many huge creatures and creatures with enter the battlefield effects. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you keep getting to recycle these creatures, one thing you want to pay attention to is not just huge creatures that are awesome to pull from yeah. the graveyard, but huge creatures, creatures huge that abilities. also... Splash onto the battlefield. Even and do small something. creatures. Yeah, with huge even the abilities. small creatures. So well, like the, one the ETB good, effects become recyclable. One really abi- good example that? of that. Just please. <laughs> <laughs> the Azoni that we were talking about alone is an ETB. The undergrowth yes. is still an ETB ability. Yeah, exactly. and just the ability to even get rid of her and just consistently do it to swarm is brutal. Nasty. Yeah. My turn. Yeah. Okay. So the sorry, we're just so excited. <laughs> um. So one other good example, um, in my opinion, is Eternal Witness. Yeah. Because it, I mean, it's kind of obvious, but yep. if somebody's milling you or if somebody is making you discard or whatever, so even if you discard non-creature spells, then you can still get them back. Yeah. And you yep. can just keep doing it and keep casting stuff, and then. You just, just bring back things you constantly. Just, you just don't feel pain. There's anymore. honestly not a green deck that Eternal Witness isn't good in. Right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's such a good card. It is probably one of the best green cards available. Yeah, and there's certainly not in any deck involving ETB effects that doesn't it use doesn't. it. Either. Oh, yeah. It's one yeah. of the main powerhouses in my Tulane deck that I re- oh, recently yeah. built. My, my, <laughs> I love doing that every uh, time. Tulane. I, uh, I, <laughs> use, I run that in Rune too. as well, Rune of the Hidden Realm. Like yeah. It's Excellent. Yeah, Rune yeah, is Rune fantastic. Rune of the Hidden Realm is a fun one. So he's I think one other thing that I think we actually talked about this a uh, little few minutes ago prior to recording but uh one fun thing about this deck is that i also have run a few planeswalkers in it <laughs> because definitely it's just it's fun you know <laughs> um i think one of like my favorite ones though is the flip liliana mm-hmm. oh yeah the yeah. healer yeah, heretical healer. healer and then i yes. think it's defiant necromancer when she flips I believe but so. it's whenever a uh, non-token creature that you control dies you exile her and flipper um and you also get to create 
two zombies or one zombie? Oh, one zombie. One zombie. One zombie. Yeah, but when she flips, she becomes one of the greatest girls in the world. Yeah, Defiant Necromancer. But the thing is, her alt on this one is whenever any creature dies, it comes back to your battlefield. Yeah. yeah. It is a minus eight, so, it, you know, she she has a plus two where each player discards a card, and then... Which is great for you also. Yeah. Yeah. And then the minus X that... I don't know how often people use the minus X. I've rarely so. seen it used, to be honest with you. I see people going for the discard effect or mm-hmm. proliferating or right up to that eight yeah. and but, getting it down. So the minus X is return target uh, non-legendary creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. I still think okay. that that is an awesome Amazing effect. effect. Especially, oh, great. especially in this deck. But everyone's always trying to race for the, yeah. her, her the ultimate. ultimate. Yeah. But right. like one thing that's always said in our house is the it's value... Ra- of- it's rare that they actually get... Uh, to alt. Yeah. Because so, you die by then? That value. doesn't happen unless you're playing alt breaker. <laughs> yeah, Let's so be like, real here. You don't see alts going off uh, left and right. Value of unless... a planeswalker needs to be the plus and the, and the first minus. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. You should not base it on the thing you're never going to get. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you get it. You get it. But, yeah, but it's usually when things... When so, it's find, when somebody forgets because there's yeah. something bigger happening. It's yeah. either a misplay or they're too distracted by the rest of the board. Yeah, and I'm not going to bring it up. Yeah, well, it, it's honestly like trying to build a draw deck and then basing the strength on Enter the Infinite. It's it's not the card that's no, seen no, for no, sure. no. no. Now, something to mention. if you guys, So, obviously, you're going to be swarming the battlefield with humongous creatures and yeah. stuff like that. One thing that's going to be a little bit of a problem for you sometimes is if you're running in, against a board state that is humongous as well. Yeah. So, if you're running against a token deck or something like that, now, how do you solve that? That's where these creature-based solutions come in, right? Or El so, Jazzy Monument. Yeah. So, like, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, there's that too. But uh, things that I want to mention are uh, things like Butcher of Malakir, mm-hmm. yeah. Dictate of Erebos, Smothering Abomination, things where uh, definitely the reason that I like Dictate of Erebos is because when you're sacking your creatures for value, you're making them sack creatures as well, each opponent as well. Yeah. Plus it right? has flash and it's an enchantment. And it's a flash <laughs> enchantment, right? So if you have a big board state coming straight at you, you can go, okay, I'm flashing in Dictate of Erebos, I'm sacrificing all of my little nubby dudes, and you're sacrificing all of it's, your creatures. It gets yeah. scary. All, of your, get all of your valuable stuff, too. Exactly. Like if somebody's out there playing something that's like big and bonky and scary, like, like tribal like dinosaurs or like dragons like that's something with like high value high mana cost so like if you're able to make force them to sack it's extremely hard for them to rebuild yep, yep. When, when, when you look at it okay the the majority of the marin decks are out there regardless of your strategy it's all about a battle of attrition yeah okay you want to small incremental value small incremental value okay sure you're you can trade things off one to one but you're getting things back for free for, mm-hmm. mo- for most of the time, okay? You're either bringing them to the battlefield or bringing it back in your hand. So you're getting more resources and you're using up your opponent's resources. So it is a battle of attrition, okay? So and like you're going to whittle them down. That, like, the pain of having to sack doesn't, it doesn't hit. There is no pain. There yeah, is there is no pain because you can bring it back good. and you it brings friends. I like it. Yeah, and it feels real, real good to sacrifice yep. some rando 1-1 one, one thrall and make somebody else have to sack their one big Voltron hexproof creature they've been putting yeah. all their resources on. It's too, indestructible. Right? That's crazy. And that's, that's the part that I really like about this deck. If you look at this deck list, you're going to go, wow, there's 34 creatures in here and next to nothing else. And there's go, a well, so where's all the solutions for everything? And the answer is the they're all on the creatures. Yeah, because you got a problem you with an them. artifact or an enchantment? Great, use Viridian your, use your Viridian, Viridian yeah. Zealot. Sorry, yeah. sack it and keep doing that over and over again. Over and over. You need to prevent combat damage, like we said before. You can throw in that spore frog, yeah. just fog, 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 fog. Yeah. If that's your strategy, yeah. right? And the same thing with Steve. Get lands, get lands, get lands. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so <laughs> that's just it. Is that it comes down to you? You have a toolkit solution for every small situation on your creatures and then you have huge splashy plays on the yeah. side yeah. for all those big board states as oh, well. Yeah. One oh, yeah. thing I like about your deck list here yeah. is that you don't have the typical aristocrat stuff like a blood artist, Zootaport, Cutthroat and everything because you Miss know what? Sort of seer. It, yeah, you like in all uh, Falcon Wrath Noble, in yeah. the end you don't really need them, okay, overall because like like sure you can drain people and all that stuff but like you're, you're not sacrificing, uh, you're not killing or sacrificing a lot of creatures you're you tend to be doing them one or two at a yeah. time okay if yeah. you're massively yeah, destroying was... things you're causing like six seven damage every single time sure throw them in but like a little drain here and there doesn't really make much of a difference and you don't no. really care about the life well, gain and, li- and like i said like it's stuff like that that 
prevents me from becoming as big of a target as yeah. I might nece- as I might have in other cases. Like if I was running cards like that, like people are like if I say Azula Port, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. But you like, know, like that that to me is an automatic target on someone. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. well really the the place where I see Zulaport and things like that, and part of the reason that I don't think it's on this list is that mm-hmm. if you're going that route where you're trying to ping people a little bit and trying to drain people out, you want to go for things less on this side where you're putting huge splashy creatures yeah. and more where you're spawning a million like using infinite say, combos small. and mana yeah. to summon a whole ton of bodies that you can sack at instant yeah, speed. But drain that's out yeah, and that's the, the kind of stuff that, that like I would expect if I I saw this exactly so then right. i would think yeah. that you're a way bigger threat than like yeah. uh, not to say that this deck isn't a threat but i'm True. saying that this deck has a very high win rate well not even because it's not like yeah because people aren't you know the, people are expecting something they don't see it and they're like oh it's probably fine yeah the yeah. interesting thing it's about that is, is exactly that it's <laughs> you see golgari most golgari decks are going to be running like That's we said those kind of right. things so yeah. people tend to save their answers for longer than they should yeah. waiting for well when's that grave pack coming out when is when is the zula port combo coming out where's the like, machaeus walking ballista meanwhile you've yeah. been drained 20 life because a bunch of guys keep dying yeah. and you're like still waiting for that grave pack yeah. <laughs> sure it's gonna be here I'm sure it's now. Right yeah it's yeah. right there it's in her hand i know it and it ain't <laughs> yeah yes so, so. There, there yeah there's so there's so many things like your yours is a very aggressive strategy which, which is what a Something I always like. I, I always I don't like playing Battle Cruiser Magic, so I like going in. I like being ag- aggressive. Me too. Be aggressive. Be, that's one be thing that aggressive. we for how differently we play. That's probably our greatest like commonality. Yeah, like like I'm a blue player, but when I first started Magic, I was re- a red player. Yeah. So it's all I can see fire. all of that come right back out of you every I time you play Annex. White. <laughs> white for me. I started mono green because it was easy. Yep, that's but, that's a common one. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. actually the reason I don't like green right now is because I find because you played it so much. Or? No, because when I first analyzed all the colors, to me it felt like green was the you know quote unquote noob tube. If you will, it's yep. the it's the op of Counter Strike. It's, 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 it's the one that you just anybody can put together a certain smattering of big cards totally. and probably well, win the game. Well, green, without green having to very, think too much. Yep. It's right. very yeah. beginner friendly. Yes, because there are a lot of mechanics, but they're very digestible mechanics. Exactly. There's not so, a whole lot of complex and that's, combos. That's why and all this that deck stuff. was one yeah. of like the first ones that I really like went hard into because it had the like ease and familiarity of green with a lot more interesting mechanics from black. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was really cool. Yeah, and the Golgari colors are in the still. Same way as yeah, yeah. Golgari yeah. yeah. colors, Gulgari are, always colors fine. are by far my favorite combination yeah. of colors, and I, of I always go back to Golgari. Well, Golgari has a ton of answers for love, everything. Well, I love yeah. black, and I need the ramp. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> black, you like fast and you like black. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like black is already really strong because like, which, like I like the fact that you don't have tutors in here. Thank you, yeah. and like. Like I don't let's need face them. It, you don't need them for because <laughs> yeah, exactly. like you're self milling and everything. Okay? Well, and it's also like there's not like a single card that's making or breaking this deck. Yeah, yeah. they're so, all like, tutoring for anything. It's like well, I could you tutor could for anything. you could include things like Razaketh. Razaketh would be really strong yeah. in this oh, with sack yeah. tutor and totally. stuff. Yeah, it'd be great. But again, like you you run such a risk of like just over over putting a target on your head. Not to mention it's way more expensive for you as the player yep. to tutor through your deck to find something then cast it. Then it is to just tutor through your graveyard, which isn't really tutor. You're just finding what you want and putting it right down. Yeah. Yeah. Slap it on the board and have fun. Well, right? and like so. I said, like no one card is making or breaking. Like no. this this deck, every single time that this deck has had success, whether or not I win, but like whether every single time that it's been successful, it's been different. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's been a, it's, yeah, it's been a totally different of huge big creatures to win. Yeah. yeah. Or lots or of little even guys. Just the little yeah. guys. Yeah. That's you the zombie the storm yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. So. Ugh, zombie storm. No, thank you. But like you have black. Black is already really, really strong. Okay. Because yeah. like black uses life as a resource. It's just yes. one of the biggest things. That's the only color that uses life as a resource. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the only problem that black really has is dealing with enchantments and artif- uh, artifacts. But you're playing green, and green, green is like one in. of the best at that. Green's the best. And that's something I'll mention too, is that even though I absolutely hate mono green, I'll tell you right now that putting green into multicolored decks is a number one. That's the that's the purpose yeah. I see for yeah. green. Yeah. When I see a color that I'm like, this isn't just this just isn't going fast enough, yeah. or it's missing a few green things like to make it get that extra... Yeah, you just... 
green with any color is basically turbo that color. Yeah, yeah. green yeah. and blue yeah. is true. turbo blue. Green and black is faster black. Yeah. Green yeah. and white is faster white. The, the, not that you need that. Ever, <laughs> green yeah, is the gas. Ever. Yeah. Green is the gas that you add to everything. So I hate using mono green as a strategy, but I love throwing in green, even just as a splash, just to throw a few land searches in yeah. there and get yeah. myself ahead on board. Even if you don't do land searches, okay, w- uh, with green, you still have enchantments that you just enchant dump lands. Dumping like you- Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and removal options. Yeah, yeah. there's there, like green is the powerhouse when it comes to ramp, okay? Because you you can, uh, you can ramp with creatures or enchantments or searching for lands, okay? It's the 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 number one color for color fixing, Absolutely. okay? Yeah. Minus artifact. Well, let's not count that, okay? But that, yeah. that's why it's so strong. Like, um, one of the things that I um that a deck tech that I gotta throw up still is like originally we wanted to do a deck tech for all the kaleidoscopes. And then I got the the Reaper King. And I'm like, I don't want to build a five color. I'm lazy. So I built a Reaper King around three colors instead. Yep. Because I don't have to. I can still cast uh, the Reaper King uh, with, with the three artifact, colors yeah. and then two other, yeah. an extra two. No one says I have to build with five. Yep, okay. That's true. And that's, that's the thing that people have to understand. Just because you have a commander that says, hey, there's four colors here. You don't have to put all four colors in. Just put in three or two yeah. or make it mono, uh, even though it's four colors. You have other th- ways to, to fix it later on. Who cares? I think my Kenrith deck runs one black card in it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you see this in exactly CDH it. strategies all the time. CDH, there's plenty of, like, if you look at most of the top tier competitive EDH decks, you're going to find a lot of partner decks involving four colors, but most of them aren't using like an equal amount of symbols in all those colors. No, they might no. have one or two little toolkit green solutions and then the rest of it's an Esper deck or yeah. whatever, right? Well, Thrasios like, and Timna is Thrasios generally Timna. just yeah. for the black. Exactly. <laughs> Most people aren't like, I want to put more white cards into my... No. <laughs> yeah. You just have the white <laughs> there in case you need a swords or whatever other things that yeah. maybe... It's a, a few specific solution. removal options. Yeah. yeah. Or like if you're going for like a food chain combo in yeah. a deck like that. And white's yeah. the most toolkit removal. It's the most... Able well, to remove all types of permanence at the lowest cost. Yeah. White is also the best for removal because it is one of the few. Uh, it has the most removal that has exile. Yes. yes. Okay. It's yeah. finalized. It's That's finalized. Actually, part of what drew me to mono white in the, in the start, I started playing in the original Theros block, and yep. uh, what really drew me in initially was uh, mono white with heroic and bestow. Yep. Yeah. So creatures yeah. that get. Bonuses when you enchant them, yeah. and then there's also enchantment creatures going on them that yeah. come back once the parent creature is destroyed. Very cool. And then I had it, uh, and that was what I liked about it is that whenever I had problems, I would just I was white, so I just go okay. Well, I've got revoke existence. I've got all these other spells Sit that there, just return smite. To dust. Yep. Small little tiny one and two cost spells that don't just get rid of your threat; they completely exile it from the game. Yeah. So that's what drew me to mono white at first was just like cool. I enchant my heroic dudes, and they get super big and great. And then if somebody wants to do something to them boom or like revoke existence flicker myself whatever it needs to be protect myself in some exiles way rough yes yeah. yeah it's so rough it's fine exiles like the biggest enemy of this deck straight up absolutely True. well yeah because you don't want to you don't want to end up losing any of those creatures at all no no, no. not permanently it hurts it really really hurts and whenever anything gets removed from the game it's just that's it like that's you it really hurts. feel it, it but the, the, yeah. that's the thing with marin okay with with marin like you know you can either like sandbag or you can go strong okay i i i don't know about you hope or you george or you mm-hmm. daniel like for me personally like if i were i i don't play marin but if i were to make a marin deck okay i make it so so stupid where i'm just like i have marin out and i just be like i I'm can't shocked. do anything what that i don't have a marin <laughs> then deck make it then he would make a crazy stupid one that nobody understands is i think what shocks her yeah well no, but not really like the <laughs> my my goal for this Okay, if I were to make it, I would make some sort of Rube Go- Goldberg machine of it, where like I just bring back all the creatures, then this one would interact with this one, and this one then goes with this, An and this eight one knocks. Step long combos. Don't do that. Why? That sounds awful. That sounds like something. I that would sounds do too. like me getting up and going to get a snack. You know, <laughs> I I was trying to work on a deck before it was uh was using white and blue for blinking things. So like, okay. For these four creatures, they all blink a separate creature that would blink at this other creature, and they would just go back and forth constantly, never ending. And then I'm like, wait, I can't stop this. I would die from stalling. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, with Marin, like you, you can go so many different ways and whatnot. And we've talked about the sacrifice strategy. We've talked yeah. about gold wise strategies kind of with like, you know, bringing back and uh, doing a bunch of one ones and all that stuff. 
everything. We have plane walkers. Um, yep. Talk about defending um, Marion a little bit. And oh, do. one thing that I wanted to mention was that with regards to her ability, like one of the best things about it, I think, is that you don't have to wait for it. There's no tap. There's no cost. There's no anything. It just happens. No, it just first yeah. Especially yeah, an end sure. step. Yeah, you don't um, have to wait to untap. No, it happens on the first time you cast her. It just is. It's, yeah. It's just it's now, part of the part of the life. A couple now. of effects you may want to consider shoehorning into your version of the deck. Yeah, that I've kind of thought of as, as well that we didn't necessarily go for on this list. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, like we said, there's a Everybody million plays ways different. to build this plays list. Differently. So if you're uh, if you want to get a little bit more of uh, your value out of the graveyard, um, self mill strategies work really well. So things yeah. like dredge using Golgari Grave Troll, Dakmore Salvage, yeah. Stinkweed Imp are really great examples. <laughs> also, scoop effects, uh, yeah. things that are uh, this is some. Something that Golgari is a pro at, uh, things like Grizzly Salvage and Treasured Find. Yes. Mill yourself, find cards that you want, and then throw the rest in the graveyard yeah. so that you get Salvage to take what you is want. One that and... I do. Is one yeah, that Grizzly I Salvage, know. I think, is in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Treasured, oh, find, oh. Treasured Find is one of my favorites. That was though. a good one. Exile this. It's a two cost instant. You exile the instant after you've used it, but you get to return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah. Instant yeah. speed, and I, be- I believe, and it's two. Two cost. Um, also, Nyx Weaver is uh, one that's Ooh. one of my favorites. I'm not sure if you've heard of that one. So this is a three cost spider, one in a black and a green, I believe. It's an enchantment creature. And what he does is at the beginning of your upkeep, I believe you mill two cards from your own library. Yeah, and if you mill, and then okay, when sure. he's in the graveyard, you can also use an effect to pay three, exile the Nyx Weaver from your graveyard, and return target card from your graveyard to your hand. That's cool. Yeah. So you get to feed the graveyard while he's alive, and then while he's dead, he's just a secret thing people always forget about in the graveyard yep. that you can just be like, oh, by the way, I'm taking I'm back this, this card from my hand. Yeah. Even you know? Well, that's something that you could even do. Like if somebody was trying to get rid of your graveyard, you're just like, well, I'm going to make sure that this doesn't leave. Yeah, like, absolutely. Specifically. You know, I just came up with a strategy for Marin. I don't know if it will work. You know, And I maybe I'll make a deck to see if this works. But <laughs> I would build a Marin deck that is pure card discard for everyone. Yep. Because if Marin you could totally do that. Because when Marin comes back, I'll just use the second ability where I can just bring car, uh, a creature card back to my hand. Just yeah. sacrifice everyone's resources from their hand, so they can't. They need the card draw, and if they, if you're getting rid of that card draw from their hand, they're kind of out of luck, and you're slowly depleting either their their resources, like their their well, answers or their land. Yeah, yeah. That's absolutely and it's all going great. to the graveyard, okay? They might not get the graveyard hate property that they would need. You yeah. keep on bringing back stuff and you keep on restocking your hands. Well, it's not a big deal. Nope. Having 10 mana on deck is useless if you have no cards in your hand. Exactly. Oh, right. Yeah. right? Or no card draw. It doesn't matter. So if you keep on forcing them to sacrifice and they're, they're top decking, then it's really, really hard. It's hard and we all know how from... difficult that is. Well, that's mm. even last weekend. Like, all of us were playing this big, big commander game. One of those happened again. <laughs> no, no. Half the and... table was playing a, a big and commander the other... game. The other half were just destroying each the other. The other half of us were top decking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we waited until everybody else was done killing each other. So we no, no. Start Daniel playing killed again. everyone. <laughs> this is actually part of the reason that my Kroxa deck is so effective is that when you throw in the discard, yeah. and, and the discard... <laughs> You don't feel it. Now all of a sudden, everybody else is losing a whole ton of answers, a whole ton of bombs. You're not scared about it at all because you're like, some point later in the game, I'm going to get this back. This yeah. is no big deal. Well, that's exactly exactly how I feel about this deck. It's like, I don't, I just don't care if yeah. you throw stuff into you my graveyard, if you do Sweet. whatever. I'll get them back it, later. It, well, it just, it adds a level of, um, like, you don't have feel consequences the same way. Yeah. You know, which is very exciting. Like, sacrifice doesn't matter. Board wipes, I don't care. Like, well, I, I'm, I'm usually playing creature st- strategies that I'm, I'm always thinking to myself, okay, if a Wrath goes off, is it going to ruin this deck for the rest of the game? Yeah. Yes or no? If the answer is yes, I don't want to play this creature strategy. I want to play something that I can throw down what I want, and if I, if it gets nuked, great. That's part of the reason I like Atla Palani. Atla Panini, sorry. <laughs> uh, Atla Panini's great yeah, for that because you throw a ton of stuff down, you're begging them to board wipe yeah. because if you destroy everything, that's all the dinos for me yeah. and nothing for you, right? So The uh, new, have you seen the new Boros uh, Gerard? No. Oh, yeah, I was actually brewing around that. That's... I have no idea how to build it yet, but uh, I really want to... I feel like there's a lot of loop strategies. He's the commander in my Boros Soldier deck now. Yeah. And it's that's the weakness is wiping all those creatures, and he yeah. makes them basically unkillable that way. Well, Bor- yeah, Boros' is number what one is- weakness is you got a whole bunch of sweet dudes, and they all get wipes. What yeah. does he do? Oh, he's uh, 
he's the first commander that actually functions this way, which is really interesting. Yes. He is, uh, when he dies, because dies specifically means exiles. That's why you can't use, like, Glenna Lendra. She doesn't actually go to the graveyard if she's your commander. She goes yeah. to the command zone. Yeah. Uh, Gerard specifically goes to your, uh, he goes to the graveyard, dies, and when he dies, you exile him and bring back all permanents that were put, all artifacts and creatures put there this turn. Oh, yeah. so he dies and you put him back so in the So let's say zone? you're running a yes. Boros oh equip strategy. God. This is actually a great example. Yep. Uh, let's say you're running a Boros equip strategy. You got a whole bunch of sweet dudes, got some knights, some soldiers, whole ton of sweet equips. Somebody decides to destroy all your artifacts and all your Never creatures Nero's that disc turn. Goes off. You just find a way to destroy your own Gerard and all that stuff's coming back. Yeah. And that and something like that in, in Boros that's so reliant well, on they, the board state. That's the, the best part is they all die at once, right? Yes. So they die at once. He hits at the same time as them. Yeah. He goes to command zone, and you don't have to worry about how to try to reset him. He just goes there. That's you really get strong. Everything back. It is very strong. It's. Uh, I think he is the best Boros soldier commander. Oh yeah, no the it, only yeah. good Boros. He's, Boros. One, he's, one, he's one of the best Boros commanders well, in general. Well, I would he's say. he's a Boros commander. Yeah, he's, he's a Boros. Leader. Good is good is subjective. Good for yeah. Boros. Yeah. Just now. Just, just Going back to Marin. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I had Squirrels. a card. I had a card I really liked in this one. That's pretty much cl- a great redundancy effect for Marin. So obviously, we just said Marin has such a good effect that she's going to get targeted a lot. So there's going to be yeah. a few times where you just don't have the answers on your creatures there when they need to be, and Marin's going to get removed too much, and you got to go. Now okay, well, Now what am I going to do sucks. without Marin here? Yeah. Well, I've got a card for you that I, one of my personal favorite Golgari colored cards. Actually, it might be the favorite Golgari colored card. Six cost enchantment called Dead Bridge Chant. Dead Bridge Chant's effect reads, I believe, at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield at random. So you basically separate out all your creatures, fan them out, and get somebody to You know what would also be dope about you. that? If it's at the upkeep, you just get to do it twice a turn. So upkeep and end step, just bing bang. Well, that's just it. If Whatever you, you don't Marin hit with the random. This, uh. Now you're just getting double of that Woo. recursion effect, double the ETB effect with large creatures. <laughs> it's huge. Hope had Deadbridge chant in it, but she just wasn't playing it enough. That's- that's one of the it's one of the ones yeah. she removed for Yeah, a lot of people find it a little bit too slow. I find the way to make Dead Bridge Chant work is that you need to get it out way early mm-hmm. with lots of things that are small in the graveyard so that people like start having to do that effect every yep. time. Or like yeah, just it, making sure that you target the right things so that they're huge spots. It is good in a self mill strategy too though. Absolutely, like, yeah, it's fantastic yes. for that. Yeah, if you're leaning more in that self mill direction, you decide to go dredge with this deck, something like that. Definitely, Dead Bridge Chant and things like that become much more relevant. Dead Bridge Chant is a powerhouse in my Mimeoplasm deck. Yes, it's so good to be able to get them back. Yeah, absolutely. Not to mention that the best part about it is that it's at random, and I love that random effect because usually the way that I do it is I pull my stuff out and I, yep. get, I fan yeah. it out. Pick a card. Some, I get one of my opponents to choose. Now the it's their effect. fault. Now it's on them. <laughs> So when they you pick, pick the Lord the right of Ex- when they pick the Lord of Extinction out of your hand that ends the game for yep. them, that feels so great. Well, <laughs> well, and it also like redirects the um, the aggro, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like people are just like, like so they're just like, oh, well, you played this. I'm like, I didn't pick it. Sherman did. Yeah, yeah it wasn't Kill my him. fault. It was Deadbridge's fault. And yeah. <laughs> it's always my fault. I don't like, care. You know I what? don't mind. You know what? She's right. We should kill Sherman. I'm. I would say if you're gonna do this. Just run Phage in the deck so that you can always have that sense oh. of danger. Dead Bridge Phage back. <laughs> I like to live on the edge. What can I say? It's like the silver bullet. No, no, no. Oh, no. Kryptonite. Kryptonite in the deck. Like, please don't get Phage out. Oh, please, no. You just, please, no. Please, I died no. now. Yeah, pretty much. I only die by my own hand. <laughs> now, some similar commanders that you may want to investigate if uh, Marin is not quite your flavor. If you want to go in the mono black direction, Yogmoth, absolutely an amazing Yog. new card for that. He's yeah. got three different uh, sacrifice abilities stapled onto him. Now, yep. he's much more of a combo heavy deck. I find him more of a suggestion for the advanced players out there. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, Muldrotha. We had uh, we just had Daniel yeah. mention Muldrotha. Muldrotha is fantastic. I almost, I almost entirely options, switched right? my Sultai strategy. I run a Sadisi self-mill deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's actually another one of the suggestions I have here. If you want to go in the tricolor direction, yep. and you really yeah. like that idea of the dredge and throwing your own stuff in the bin so that you can get it later, Sadisi is amazing because she uh, not only get, is really good at self-milling you, uh, but at the same time, she gets value off of it. So every yep. every every creature you're throwing in there 
there. Not every creature, but whenever yeah, but a creature the majority goes of... in there, when you self mill, you're gonna get a zombie out of it, and you can. I bought I so bought tribal awesome. zombies with yep. her. I just basically mill the heck out of myself, get a bunch of zombies, and throw a bunch of zombie lords down, and get going. Right? Yeah, so that's a similar one as well. Well, I do like the idea as well of when we're doing deck techs, just talking about things that are similar commanders because. Maybe you like a bunch of what's going on in a Marin deck, but eh, Marin's still not really your specific flavor. You don't like yeah. the experience counters. You don't like that. It, it is neat to like well, maybe, know that there's other options available. It's not yes. just Marin with this. Well, like maybe you want to splash a blue, you know? Yeah, so like, like You want to play, yeah, like who knows like what your specific style you're, is. You're Brian. You need a Ristic like, study in there. Yeah, like, we, I get yeah it. you want to play Scarecrow. But like, <laughs> well, sometimes but, like, it's, it's the stuff, effects, yeah, yeah that you're drawn it's, well, to, not necessarily the person. Oh, yeah, and it's, it's stuff like that, like where if you can take like parrot, similar... You can take like s- some mechanics and some style from a deck like this and kind of twist it to your own uh, kind of play style. You know, yeah. like there, evilness. yeah, like there <laughs> are the options of to kind of yeah, that exactly. Every mechanic, like any mechanic you like in this game, because there was so much history and so yeah. much cards. There's guaranteed to be a few different commanders, except for very specific mechanics. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, we didn't have a, real, a true madness commander until yeah. we got Anya, right? But, like, you could do things that included madness in back in the day, right? But uh, there's other strategies, like, you know, just about every single type of strategy, creature strategy, token strategy... If you like plus one counters, whatever it is, there's I do. at least five to ten great <laughs> commanders you can pick from, all yeah, there, similar but in different ways. Yeah, there's there's so many out there, and like like it's it's just like uh, as long as they're not playing competitive, because com- co- competitive is very very straight much smaller. Yeah, there's a lot parts. of interaction. You have a lot of instances and anything. Like mm-hmm. you, when someone's playing a prosh, you know what's gonna come out. You gotta get rid of food chain stuff or like so that. So you think? Dead. I, I, <laughs> I definitely have to say it. It's Angie. It's Angie, not Anya. I, I, I wasn't going to break. You broke. No. I've never seen a European name, A-N-J-E, that is not pronounced But Anya. Wizards of the Coast it, said. It is Angie. Uh, it, 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 Wizards it, it, of the Coast is wrong and they need to learn They can be wrong. <laughs> they can be wrong. They can be like, they can be it's like wrong I'm against Anya. like, but they're, it's also not from Europe. It's from... The, the, the world pro- of Magic of the Gathering. The pronunciation yes. of the card but it's is very Angie. obvious what it's evoking. <laughs> I just want to see, I, no, let's, let's not mention this to Brian. Let's see how long it takes him to listen to this and freak out on, uh, in the Discord. Like, yo, guys, it's Angie. Not... Uh, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> yo, you can say whatever you want. That's the fun. But you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So George is never being invited back. <laughs> No, Welcome to Don't the club. Don't talk about madness, commanders. I can't, I can't, Don't do I can't. it. Welcome to the club. <laughs> no, actually, though, I do really, really like her. I think she's dope. Yeah, yeah. I almost went for Whatever her Whatever her name is, I'm all about I her. I almost went for her myself, but Kroxa got announced the day I was deciding to build a Rakdos deck, and that just stole my heart. I wanted to go for that escape mechanic. So Yeah. Bad. That yeah, that deck of yours is really cool, by the way. Yeah, oh, well, it's yeah. it's something so everybody good. expected to suck because they were like, huh, "You're exiling your graveyard, you're an idiot." And it's like, well, not necessarily because I filled my graveyard with yeah. my hand I just wheeled, along with all of your guys' hands you just wheeled. Yeah. So I've always got that room. I've got those five cards to escape with almost every turn. Well, it's like we we mentioned before when we were first going through the Pharaohs uh, re- uh, spoiler scenario mm-hmm. thing, you know, like. There's a lot of mixed uh, opinions on escape, and yeah. we're all in agreement. Like we talked about it, and we're like, okay, like look, escape is a great mechanic because it forces anyone that doesn't really know how to use the graveyard as a resource to actually use it as a resource for once. You know, yeah. it's great for beginners. It's instructional. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, yes. It's mm-hmm. it's a good it's a good way to dabble in uh, graveyard recursion and yeah. any of that. Getting used to like yeah. you know using your library to to you to mill and everything, look for resources that way. It's fantastic for that. So totally. you know, and the fact that you made an EDH deck around that it's is cool. fantastic. You know, yeah. it goes to show that you know if you put your mind to it, you can make almost anything happen. And I say and almost because if you see, look at the old legendary yeah. creatures back from like you know legends and everything, they're really really rough. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. I was gonna say like you could even smatter in some escape in a deck like this if you wanted to oh yeah and like exile things like sorceries and instants and stuff that like you're not necessarily bringing back like that yeah. isn't gonna hurt as much even like 
creatures that you're just like, I, I'm just not going to deal with this, this game. Yeah. Like, you can you can yeah. do whatever you want. Like that is another option. Like if you wanted to, you can smatter some escape. I would, I would use it as a, I would use it as a bluff. Yeah, I was like yeah. people would be like you know like if I was playing Marin and I was using escape to like exile things from a ga- graveyard, someone would be like, oh, I'm gonna like bajuga bog you. It's like why? I only have three cards left. Okay, yeah. I yeah. have to put more in there. Why don't you choose the other person that has like. 20 cards in their graveyard. That's a better thing. Yeah. Sure, this is my strategy, but I only have three cards left. Yeah. I can't do anything. And then it'll be like, yeah, okay. Like, 50, I say 50 50 chance that they will still target you. Mm-hmm. You know? Cause, but like, most people, when, uh, if you're a non experienced player or like you're playing against people that aren't that as experienced, okay, they would rather go for value. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the value is they're going to target to someone graveyard. that has 20 cards in their graveyard, even though they might not have a single card. Of, or graveyard recursion card in their whole deck. Yeah, they'll still target them just because it's better value yes. than yours, where you only have three cards. Well, you, can, you bring back stuff to know better perceived value. Yes, yeah. Yeah. they don't know. <laughs> so now that actually yeah. brings me into something too, like just moving a little bit away from escape and just into graveyard strategies in general. One thing, and this applies to Marin too. I do this in my Crocsa deck all the time. So as we just mentioned, escape gives you a really good kind of uh, instructional thought modality of paying attention to your graveyard what's in my graveyard how many cr- cr- uh, cards are in my graveyard and when can i use them yeah so something that i've really been doing a lot with croxa is uh now w- one thing i see a lot of people do when they have to pay attention to their graveyard if they've got flashbacks things like that they'll take the cards that ha- that are reusable from the graveyard put them on the top put them on the top so they remember oh yeah i have that thing yeah. here's the problem everybody so else does remembers. everybody else <laughs> yeah. i know yeah. so stop, stop yes. it. doing that stop it Stop doing I that. I leave my Croxa right that. underneath all my other cards. Now, that said, I've got it sleeved in a different colored sleeve, so I still remember it's there. But even without that, I always make sure I'm constantly keeping track in my own head without picking up my graveyard pile. Because that's another thing. You pick it. This is very, uh, magic's kind of similar to poker in that sense. You're reading other people's yeah. movements. You're reading their tells. When somebody goes and picks up their graveyard and they start shuffling through every turn... They're looking for something, yeah, right? Or, or they're I'm, reminding themselves. I'm thinking about it. I'm doing like right? you have to. It, there's a level of bluffing and a level of exactly kind of you. You don't want to count your chickens, so to speak. Yeah. You know, like because that's exactly it. That's something that I used to do when I first started playing this yeah. deck. Yeah, common because I also, with new players. Totally. Yeah. Like because I when I started playing this deck, not only was I new to the deck, but I was new to the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Being, so being I constantly did that and I yeah. totally get it, you know, and a hundred percent, I will say that Daniel cut me a lot of slack when we were first starting to play because he definitely didn't just talk <laughs> well, because and that's the way you welcome a new magic player. Totally. Yeah, you got, but, be like, nice but that's now that, that I'm game, looking just, back at it, I'm like, oh yeah. my god. Yeah. <laughs> I can't well, believe I did sure. that. Listen, like, if, if you want to be a better magic player, okay, as time goes on, you want to learn to remember things, okay? So, slowly, okay? And, it, and that comes down to paying attention, being part of the game, okay? When you, yeah. when you do that, you start to remember things more and more and more often, yeah. okay? You start remembering triggers, start remembering like other people's triggers. it sounds triggers. so simple, you, right? It sounds but, simple, but it takes a long time to yeah, develop. Totally. And sometimes okay. you got to train yourself, too. Yeah. I know uh, with me, I almost, for the longest time, I used to never remember triggers on my upkeep until yeah. I heard somebody start doing the whole, put a little token on top of your deck, yeah. like just a little crystal or something on the deck, a dice on top of your deck, so that you can go like, oh, Wait, yeah, Tyrone has his deck? trigger. Oh, yeah, trigger. Card, that's yeah. why yeah. I put it there. Untap, and if I don't need, upkeep, I don't need it I now. I can't draw yet. But that helped me train myself to start thinking of that. Yeah. And then, yeah, like I said, with my Croxa strategy now, now I'm, I've got all those things in my mind. Yeah. So yeah. I know when they're in the graveyard so that when I pull out that response, I go, I got a response in the graveyard. They go, what? Yeah. And you go, yeah. yeah, well, I got that thing, remember? Well, that's, that's no, exactly I didn't because like it's not my, on the top of your graveyard. Yeah. That's exactly like my Marin deck. It's like, yeah. I, I know what's in it. Like yes. the whole time, I just, I know what's in my graveyard at any given time. Like as soon as it hits the graveyard, it's locked and loaded. Yeah. yeah. Like ready to go. Like, and I would that, say that's the first part you want to work on if when, you're, own. when you're getting familiar with the deck is know what I, what I do the best and how I do it. And then yeah. after you've mastered that, then you start looking around the table. What what uh, what we were just mentioning before here is that you know, start to learn the ticks of the other players. Yeah. Start to yeah. learn how they bluff. Start to learn what they do when they're looking for a spell, when they're looking for like, an answer. One thing that struggling. I know that Sherman does is he shuffles his hand. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's a and constant that, hand shuffler. Yeah. I never do yeah. that. Uh, I do but, that because like I always look at it again to remind myself what I do have and everything, yeah. right? Yep. Because of course, because it's just it's not like okay, this is this position, whatever. I constantly do that. I also try, constantly try to remember other people's triggers, and I'll remind them of those triggers because that actually helps me remember for things. yourself. Yeah. 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 Well, so, and also it almost makes you seem like a pal. Like it makes you seem like like which is like one of the reasons friend. why I can get rid of. Uh, I also remind people yeah. of their triggers. I mean, I've always said this about myself. I, I'm like Goku when it comes to magic. It, <laughs> yeah, you like, want. I don't you want, want to be the best. I don't want to lose to you because you forgot a trigger. Okay. I want to let you get into your super ridiculous form and then beat you at that yeah. form. Well, that because also... if I can beat you at the top, then there's like yeah. that's, that's that's how it. I know that's I want. That's one of the reasons yeah. like I think Daniel wants to touch on. Yeah. yeah, one of the things I like to do is I like to tell people what they miss at the end of the game because yeah. there's you don't want to tell people how to do it their own way in the game. You want to let everyone yeah. see how Play they can get game. to it. Yeah. But at the end, if you are noticing people aren't missing triggers or maybe misunderstanding a card, really good example is Multani. I'm not good at reading. Yeah. 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 So I uh, I always forget that it's 1-1 one, one for each card in play and graveyard, not just graveyard. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Hope killed me with that one. And then also was like, oh, by the way, it has reach, just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, I, I, you know. It like happens. It was, like, because Daniel's an experienced player, you know, it would be one thing if it was like a new player be like, hey, like, your card does this. Like you can kill me, yeah. You know, like that's usually how I go with new players. Yeah, for sure. but yeah. for Daniel, like he should have read it. That's his fault. Yeah, yeah. like he's. That's how I approach experience. Yeah, players it's, too. it's it's yeah. it's End it's of kind the game. of yeah, it's kind of feeling it out. Or even yesterday, like yeah. I was playing um, my Atraxa deck, and I had infinite turns. Yeah, and Ew. I easy to do. Easy Ew. to do, but I usually don't. But I yeah. have infinite turns twice because I had Sage of Hours and Sage of Hours. I love that Sage of Hours. So Man, that was I, a fun I had deck. I had double oh. infinite turns forever. Oh yeah, and that was just what it was. But uh-huh. like I was still trying to like because it's a lot. Yeah, like, and I play that deck a lot. But like it was like especially end game. Like I literally ran out of dice and I had to it's use so other people's work. dice. Yeah. So I was just trying to check everything, count everything, and I was like, oh my god, like there's so much proliferation and double counters here. And Daniel's like, you have infinite turns. Like, I was like, what? And he's like, this, 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 ding, 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 He's just like, so can you, like, basically to the other players, like, can you stop her right now? Because if yeah. you can't... Then it's, it's game over. It's, it's game over. It's You're never loop. getting another turn. Yeah. You have two blue mana. Can you stop it? No? Okay. No, no yeah. counters mana or anything like that? Or boomerang? or. <laughs> well, I had, like I said, I had two infinite turn yeah. triggers, right? So, like, I was mm-hmm. in a place that, like... If he if he was, I'm pretty sure he could get rid of the creature, but it I had. It wouldn't make no difference. Usually yeah. with triggers too, especially with new players, I just kind of three strike it. So I'll let them fail at it a couple times yeah. without mentioning anything, and then like the third or fourth time, I'll be like, like, by the hey, way, like last two turns, you could have been doing done this. this. Yeah, start doing it now before well, you lose. And essentially, thing, like right? the reason that Daniel had mentioned that was yeah. because like I would have gotten there, but it would have taken forever. Yeah, exactly, like to yeah. roll everything up and roll it down and attack and roll everything up and roll it down. It's just like and it wouldn't have been enough. It's just it's enough. like let's just move on to the yeah. next game. Like the, you, you won. Yeah. The good thing about <laughs> all of this though is what I personally like is that it starts with this. Uh, discussion amongst players yes. like what are the rules are like how you interact like like yeah uh i i dropped in and i was playing someone out um someone else's deck yeah because i i had to just go in and out um so but I, like i i was waiting for the store uh adrian to come in because i had to talk to him about a few things so i borrowed someone else's deck and like we got into a large discussion because the way i piloted his deck he's never seen before yeah okay and yeah. it's just yeah, like I remember you know, him saying no, that at the end. He was yeah. like, I've done this deck, but this was piloted by a better pilot. Like, yeah. You used my deck, but yeah. I'm impressed with the way you yeah. did this. And like we, we started discussions like like at one point in time, because like he was playing um the the morph uh commander. Yeah. Uh, from the new uh, from the, the new. 2019 precon. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name, uh like Kadena, Kadena. I believe. Yeah. Slinking Sorcerer. Yeah. yeah. So like I had a bu- <laughs> maybe. So I had a bunch of morph, maybe. My morph comma things. in there or something. Yeah. I had a bunch of more things on the table and everything, and I had mana up because, you know, they let me have the Seaborn Muse out. <laughs> Why? Why would they do that? Because they were tapped out, and I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was waiting That's for it why. so bad. So, Value. but like, um, like they, he tried to Psychonic Rift, overloaded. And I'm like, okay, yep. I'll copy that spell. <laughs> and he's like, okay, so you bounce one thing. I'm like, no. You you paid for the, the overload cost. When I'm I copy it, I'm the copying overload the overload. Cost. He's like, give me an example. It's like, well, if you choose something like, 
where it has an option like choose the mode two. Of a spell. Uh, a mode of a spell. If I copy that, I'm copying a mode. I cannot choose which mode. Yeah. Same yeah. thing here, you know. So it, it starts a discussion. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff, right? So like, yeah, we cyclonic rift the whole board, and he's like, he had uh, uh, omniscience out. Oh. Okay. Oh, great. So, but in response to all of that stuff. That. Yeah, I just did you I, take it? No, I destroyed it, oh. so you couldn't cast omniscience. Just as good, you know. So like, you know, so he had to go to the discard. Like he eventually won because like he he had extra turns and everything. Yeah. Like, but you know. it, but, but it's still. interesting. Like there are even things like um, the responding to proliferation, which is something that we discussed yesterday. Yeah, which was can you? And well, you, yeah, can, you can, but like this was like a discussion that we had because like there was a disagreement about it because of the way that it's worded, yeah. which is very interesting, you know, like whether or not you can target it, whether or not you can target it when it's got pro, like mm-hmm. how all of that works. And that was really cool. Like to see, it's always interesting. And I feel like it happens every single Friday that like everybody gets into a discussion about, about, about something, or so, or some sort of, yeah, mechanical well, it's, such rules. A, it's such a complex game with so yeah. many, a, mechanics and rules but be interactions between those rules well and specifically with commander like it's interactions that never were supposed to happen yeah yeah (laughs) well literally the magic creators themselves plenty of them have said like the way that this game works is that you have this i think and really i think this is what lends to its longevity is that you have one set of rules yeah and that every single card in this game breaks those rules in some way, in some magnitude. Yeah. Well, and the more it breaks the game, the more of a, generally the more rare and the more powerful and whatever it is, right? But the, the idea here is that usually you're, you're, you're paying a cost with the land to subvert some rule of the game in some way and spin it to your deck. Well, even look at like just the base level of the game. Like the speeds you can cast things. Instant speed, mm-hmm. sorcery speed. Yeah. A Grand Abolisher stops instant speed. It changes the rules of when things can be played and how things Another can be played. Another reason I love mono so white. True. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that's so simple, but yeah. it makes such a huge difference. If somebody's playing an Is It deck, you probably just ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> <Or the Grand laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I always like ruin stuff yeah. like that. So. Well, like, and that's the thing. You kept a hand for the ley line of anticipation. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, you, you always, you always have these things. Like, I have the biggest conversation every single time when I play my NFNs deck, and when I actually get my combo off, people always uh, start trying to rule law- lawyers me because yeah. my NFNs wins by using split second. Yeah. And then I sacrifice Seen things. That before, yeah. Yeah, I sacrifice things to add, like Ashnos Ultra or a mana generator of some yeah. sort. Yeah. And then I have a bunch of death triggers and uh, reanimate triggers. And they're like, yeah. Split second says you can't put st- stuff on the stack. No, no, no. You can put you cannot put spells or activated abilities on the stack. After triggered that ab- split second. Yeah. Triggered abilities still work. And then at our times, I'll that's do something. That's interesting because I would probably have the exact same art, like discussion and be like, yeah. you can't do that. Split yeah. second. And you'd be like, yeah, I always can. have this every single time. I always have this conversation. Okay. The split second specifically says you cannot cast spells or use activated abilities that can, will add to the stack. And Trigger's the fact, abilities and the, don't yeah, count. I was going to say the fact yeah. that it specifies activated abilities means that yeah. it would have specified triggered abilities. Yeah. Yep. Or someone will. Or say any. You know? Yeah, or someone will, if I'm not ready, someone will cast something that was split second, and I'll wait for that spell to resolve. Once that spell's resolved, I add to the stack again. They're like, you can't do that. Like, you can't add stuff to the stack. I'm like, the spell with the split the second stack, already resolved. You're like, the stack is empty. This is a new, it's, new stack. It's, yeah. not, it's not even the stack is empty, okay? So, like, let's say I have, like, it's there's just three the re- spells. It's just the reading of the rules. It's, no, yeah. it's really it's how like, it's read. Yeah, so it's like, I have three spells, and then the fourth spell, someone cast something that has split second. It resolves. One, once it resolves, yeah, I have the three three spells still. Yeah. Now but I can it, react to it again. Yeah, that's no longer on the stack. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. So it's just little things like that that people don't consider. Because like when people see split well, second, they're like, okay, the whole nothing can be added. That whole thing has to resolve. Like, no, no, the spell has to resolve. You can add stuff to the stack after that spell has resolved. But here's, but that I think really falls back onto the fact that the stack is complicated. The stack yes, is, but is. that's and, one of the best things in true, Magic. True. Yeah. So, anyways, I think we're way past time. <laughs> we went off on a on a huge tangent there. I guess what, what, we're, what we're all summing up to here is that make sure you discuss with other players what they play in their decks, what they liked about yours, what they didn't like about yours, what they would advise you change. Oh, well, and you want to play Having Mary. that discourse with each other <laughs> is really, really important what? for developing your play strategy. 
I also think that even using this exact podcast as an example, is you're going to learn about cards that you've never heard of. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. Like, there's always going to be a, a player that's been around longer than you. There's going to be players that play totally different cards than you because you kind of get stuck in your meta sometimes. Yeah. And so it's nice to kind of, like, broaden your horizon. So yeah. I would say to that end, um, thank you for listening, guys. Um, please feel free to check out our social media, our Discord. And uh, let us know, A, how you'd build this deck, if there's other decks that you run that Are really similar. crush some graveyard version, because yeah. I How do you like to play for this? Your favorite Golgari cards in general? Things yeah. You would Let's, all of them. Yeah. Uh, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Of course. Anyways, yeah. thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Cheers. Catch you later.